Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Pen Habit. Glad to be back for yet another pen review. And today I'm going to be uh, waltzing back in time a few decades, back to the 70s, I believe, and doing a review of a new old stock pen I recently bought from Peyton Street Pens on eBay. That is the Schaefer Imperial 330. So this is a small pen. I got new old stock, which means basically it's it's old, but it's never been inked, never been sold, never been used. So it's as though it is brand new. Um, it's an interesting little pen. Uh, and I'm I'm still not sure how I feel about it. There's some things I like, some things not so much. So let me walk you through the pen just a little bit. So here is our uh, here is our pen for the day. It's, uh, it's a small pen, and I'll get into the measurements here shortly. It's got a square top here, uh, injection molded it looks like. Uh, with a, a nice solid clip. It, there's a little bit of give, but you can tell, I can already tell that it would be pretty easy to pop this clip right out of the cap, uh, the way that, that it has been put in. Got the little white dot, which is common on Schaefer pens. Uh, silver band here, and then it says, made in USA, or Schaefer made in USA. It's actually written upside down, down here. So Schaefer made in USA. Um, comes down to another end here, again, you can see the a little thing from the injection molding, and uh, and then you pull it off. And what makes this pen interesting to me, and the whole reason I got it was this diamond shaped inlaid nib. Now this is a this is a Schaefer thing. There a lot of their older pens have this, and I, I've heard a lot of people say good things about Schaefer nibs. So I wanted to give one a try. Um, so that's the nib there. You can see the feed is just kind of a solid block underneath it. Um, this is a cartridge converter pen, but it comes with an aerometric cartridge or aerometric converter rather, and uh, with a, a pressure bar that you can use to fill or uh, expel ink from the sack here. So this a couple things I want to point out. This thing here, this it feels like it's made of aluminum, the the threads on the section. and it does not mesh well with the body of the pen. It feels rough. Um, and I don't know if that will ease over time or if I feel like I ought to put some silicone grease on it or something, but it, it's not quite right. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't mesh nicely there. It feels kind of cheap. Um, likewise, another weird thing is, these, see, see these little nodes here? Uh, when you put the cap on, that's basically what holds the cap in place. There's three of them. Or, yeah, I think there's three. And uh, and when you put the cap in, it you don't get that satisfying click like you do on a lot of pens. And if you've got a lot of pens with twist converters, your initial response is going to be to twist the pen, which is a mistake because all you're going to do is, is pull the barrel off. So that's kind of a flawed design in my opinion. Um, it, it, it is a pull top pen. Um, it's also very, very, very small. So it's only 113 millimeters. Um, uncapped, which is just a little too small for my hand. You can see here, I generally hold it right about here, and it's it's just on the edge of being too small to hold. Um, but it does, the nice thing is it does have that kind of unibody design, like a Parker 51 or something, where there's no step down between the section and the barrel or anything like that. It's solid. So if you need to hold it back here, you can. If you like holding it up here, you can. That's great. Uh, capped, you're looking at 130 millimeters. And posted, and this pen almost requires posting, and it can be posted fairly securely, you're looking at a very reasonable 144. And you'll notice it fits quite nicely in the hand uh, posted. I actually, this is how I write with it when I use it. It is, the grip, because you've got that unibody style there, it, the grip is variable based on where you want to do it. But where I hold it, right about here, it's 10 and a half, which is just perfect for me. And then... Uh, the widest point of the cap, you're looking at 12.7 millimeters. It's also a very light pen. Even with the metal uh, converter, you're looking at 10, or 10 grams inked with the converter in place, uncapped, and 16 grams capped or posted. So it's still a light pen. This would be a great pen for someone with smaller hands as well, I think. 
Despite that, and despite the fact that I generally don't like small pens, that's generally not my, my thing, I've actually been fairly impressed with this. The nib on this, which is a steel nib, uh, was surprisingly smooth right out of the gate. Good ink flow, um, especially for a fine nib. And, uh, I, and I haven't had really many problems with it. It's, this is a pen that it's a, I, I can't in good conscience call something from the seventies vintage because crying out loud, I would, I'd have to call myself vintage. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it is an older pen and, uh, it's it's a cheap older pen. I mean, you can tell this was not a high-end pen even when it was sold. I bought it for $45, steel nib. It's an interesting design. It's a little dated, but it writes well. And so if you're looking for an, an inexpensive way to, you know, I would recommend something like this over a pen like the, the Lamy Safari. Um, I, I like this better. I like the design. I like the writing of it better. I like the nib better. Um, this to me is, is more interesting than a Lamy Safari or a Lamy All-Star, which are right around the same price. Um, so anyway, let's, let me dive in. Let me walk you through the writing sample on this, and then we'll finish up with a couple last thoughts. So this is the Schaefer Imperial 330. And this was new old stock with a fine nib in steel. The ink for today is Private Reserve Burgundy Mist. And we are on a Rhodia dot pad. Now, uh, let me do the little quote for today. Okay, so this is a very, very fine nib. I would almost say it, it matches more the Japanese-style fines than it does the, uh, the Western-style fines. In fact, if you let me... Oh, I can't see what I've been doing there. If you let me pull out the Pilot Falcon, you can see if I put the fines lines next to each other, they're almost identical in width. Um, this is a modern Falcon. That's the Schaefer. And actually, it looks like because the Schaefer's nib is pretty rigid, uh, it's actually a little bit finer. Um, but like I said, you know, the nib is fairly smooth for being as fine as it is. Um, there's not a lot of give to it. It's, as I said, pretty rigid. Um, it is a little feedbacky and probably just a touch more than I would like. So at some point, I will probably go in it and just do a, a minor bit of smoothing on this nib. Uh, it's also not too terribly dry. It's still just a little, um, it, and it's, it wouldn't be, su or I'm sorry, it's not too terribly wet. Still, still feels just a little dry. And that probably has more to do with the fact that I'm used to medium and broad nibs than I am these super fine nibs, which by their very nature are going to be drier. Um, and, and the other thing is because of this nib, this is a little bit the, the diamond-shaped inlaid nibs, I have to imagine, are a little bit harder to adjust uh, than the standard nibs that you can pull out of the pen, that sort of thing. Um, Upside-down writing, very scratchy, but even finer. Uh, this would be like an extra fine or even a super extra fine. Um, very fine nib there. Uh, but overall, you know, for 45 bucks. I can think of a lot of modern pens that, that run in this price range that I like a whole lot less than this one. It's got an interesting design. I like the materials. I like the, um, 
I like the nib. I love the, I do like the inlaid nib quite a bit. And I'm surprised at the smoothness for a pen that is so, has such a fine line. Now, uh, this pen does not convert me to the, the ranks of the Schaefer lover, the vintage Schaefer lover, because, you know, like I said, I don't call this vintage, and I don't think this falls under the category of, of their top-notch materials anyway. But it's a neat little pen. I would recommend this for someone who has smaller hands. This would be a good pen for my mom or my grandma, for instance. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, an, it's a nice little pen. I'm not gaga over it, but I, there's a lot I like about it. So if you have any questions or thoughts, uh, let me know. You can uh, leave them in the comments below or head over to penhabit.com or drop me an email at penhabit at gmail.com. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit.